right, without any further uh, introduction, because he doesn't need any Donald Trump, thanks for being with us. Mr. Trump, did you hear my introduction at all about what they did with the NYPD uh, Muslim report? I did, and I know how you feel about it, because you haven't changed. One thing about you, Michael, you're a very consistent person like me. So That's right, and that's why people don't like us. In a world of malleable, changeable positions, we are like mountains, Donald, and they don't like mountains. They want to grind us down into sand. True. Now, your position has been very consistent and very the same as that. Our borders, language, culture. Donald, listen, do you know what the Democrat motto for New Hampshire is? No, tell me. Live free and get high. Oh, oh boy. That's uh, nice. I don't want to drag. No, don't agree with me on that. They'll use it against you. Let me take the, fl the, fl the flack for that, for that one. Donald, there's a great article, finally, that came out about you. Someone said something good in the New York Post. Steve Cuzo, C-U-O-Z-Z-O, -Z -Z how Donald Trump helped save New York City. And although I've supported you, Donald, I didn't know that this is true, that you took this city from the garbage can and you took a chance on it in the mid-70s through the mid-90s when very few would do that. And you rebuilt that city. Yeah, I just read that article, and Steve is a fantastic guy and a great writer, and it was very nice that he wrote that article. He, he actually called me and said, you know, I'd like to write an article because you've done so much to save New York, and I did it at a time when it wasn't fashionable in many cases, and, you know, it's been great for the city, and I'm very happy, and it was very nice that somebody would write that kind of an article. I mean, people listening across America should know that Donald Trump created something between 59th and 72nd Street that was nothing but old railway yards. It's now a home to over 10,000 people. He built the Trump International Hotel and Tower, which I stayed in, by the way, on my last trip. It's a fantastic, beautiful building. That's the, the old Gulf and Western building. This was an area filled with vagrants in Central Park. You freshened up that area. I'm going to go down the list. I don't care if people say I'm, I'm being too nice to you. You created the Walman Skating Rink in 1986. 40 Wall Street, 1995. Trump Plaza, 160, 70, 61st Street, completed in 1984. That's before half of these candidates were even born. You were doing these things. And I don't want to sit here listening to people run you down when it's all false, Donald. That's the reality of it. But the bigger issue for me, and I want you to talk, sorry, I'm, I'm excited over this thing of the NYPD report. I'm excited over the DHS agent who worked there 15 years who said that Obama personally ordered him to expunge all records of dangerous Muslim front groups in America. You're the only one bringing up this issue, Donald. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's radical Islamic terrorism, and we have a president that won't even use the words. And if you don't use the words, you're never going to get rid of the problem. But we, we have, uh, maybe he doesn't want to get rid of the problem. I don't know exactly what's going on. Uh, uh -huh. uh, now, now you're going as close to the, to the board as a, as a hockey player can go without hitting the puck into the, into the stands. I get it. This is where I'm going. I can't believe the man is nakedly doing these things. But, Donald, let's talk about New Hampshire for a minute. You're way ahead of the pack, correct? Okay, yes, yeah, so far. You're not even saying you're going to win? Well, I don't want to really say it because I don't want to bring myself any bad luck. I mean, I'm doing well. The polls look good. The enthusiasm is incredible. Tonight we're going to have a crowd of four or 5,000 people out, although it's snowing, so I don't know. Maybe that'll be a little bit smaller. But... Uh, we are doing really well up here. I'm here now. I'm in New Hampshire right now. And, in fact, I just turned down big, big, big interviews in order to talk to my man, to, to Michael. <laughs> you've been, Donald, you've been so listen, I watched, I watched a debate the other night. I saw something different this time. I saw Christie rubbing out Rubio. I saw poor Carson standing like a schmendrick in the entrance way. I didn't even know they called his name. And you're the only candidate that didn't, didn't step over him. I mentioned that on my show. All the others walked by him like he wasn't there. He didn't hear it or something. You actually stood there with him and told him his name was called. And you said, Ben, go ahead. You were called first. Do you remember that? Yeah, I did. And I sent him out. And, and uh, you know, I'll tell you, he's a nice man. And, you know, it was very interesting. It was not his fault. You couldn't hear a thing back there. It was really the fault of the network because you couldn't hear anything. So I walked out and I saw Ben standing. I said, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be out there. And I stood with him until they got it straight. But it wasn't Ben's fault because you couldn't hear a thing. And, yeah, people thought it was very nice that I stood with him as everybody else walked by. But That's right. They stepped over basically a, a person who had fallen in the street. And that tells you an awful lot about people. And people should see. Here's the thing, Donald. It's, it's like me. Brash people from New York are often called names that don't apply to them. They think if you're direct and honest that you're a mean person. And what they don't understand is I've lived on the West Coast most of my adult life, 
all these nice people will stick a knife in your back faster than anybody that I've ever met in New York, to be honest with you. I prefer people who are upfront with what they are saying rather than hidden in their agendas. So that comes down to your agenda. There's so many things people are criticizing you for. Let's go into it for a minute or two. This thing with eminent domain, I don't even want to talk about it. I don't think it's that, that important or that interesting. I want to talk about the war on terror. How would you crush ISIS? I know you don't want to give away a, a battle plan, but I don't think it's that complicated. Putin's doing a pretty good job, and that's where I disagree with Cruz. What is wrong with Cruz that he says Russia is our number one enemy? Is he crazy? Well, first of all, let me talk for one second. Eminent domain, without eminent domain, you won't have roads, you won't have bridges, you won't have highways, you won't have anything. Uh, this guy Bush is a total lightweight. He's the one that brought it up. He's a lightweight. And now it turned out that his family used eminent domain, private eminent domain, to build their Texas stadium, you know. So yeah. this is what you have to go through. with This world of politics is crazy. But as far as ISIS is concerned, you have to crush them, and you have to crush them fast. You know, one of the reasons we haven't taken out the oil, Michael, I don't know if you heard this, but because they didn't want to affect the environment. Okay, because we'd have oh, yeah. you know, pollution. Oh, you know, that's <laughs> Obama's priority, is global warming, not beating ISIS. I get it. He's, he's completely milk toast the entire military. But, Donald, I want to talk about foreign policy. You have clearly said, and I agree 100%, that we need to make <clears throat> Putin and Russia our ally in the war against ISIS. That makes perfectly good sense. It's logical. It was only when Putin started to bomb them that, that Obama made a, a few more moves against them. Ted Cruz seems to be advised by the same neocons who got us into Iraq to begin with, and he's making Putin our enemy. Don't you think that's a critical error? Well, Putin said great things about me, and, you know, and look, I've been, uh, I know when I'm being played and all, but he said Trump is brilliant, Trump is their real leader and all that stuff, and you know what? I accept it, okay? I would say, the, the people said, oh, you should disavow that. Here's the story. What's wrong with having a good relationship with Russia? What's wrong with Russia bombing the hell out of ISIS and these other crazy so that we don't have to spend a million dollars a bomb let them buy some of the bombs because that's what's happening and i say i can't believe these people they want to do it themselves we've been we've been over there michael for 15 years 15 years we've been fighting over there spending trillions and trillions of dollars and so far we have nothing for it if russia wants to be friendly with us and wants to bomb the hell out of isis i say that's great we'll help them Right, I understand. That's why I agree with even Bernie Sanders, by the way, said Russia should be our, our ally. And Hillary, again, like an idiot, says Hitler, it called him a Hitler number one six months ago, Putin now. And now she says we should, Russia's our enemy. In, in that, she agrees with Cruz that Russia's our enemy. Who's advising them? But let's move on. Yesterday was the Super Bowl. Were you in New Hampshire during the Super Bowl, Donald? Yes, I was here. Absolutely. I was did you there. have time? To, did you have time to watch the game? Not much of it. I'm here right now. Is at an event. Uh, I got to watch some of it. I thought it was a very boring game, actually. Thank you. And number two, the mid, the, the event, the dancing in the middle, supporting the Black Panthers. I don't want to drag you into that one. There's an awful lot of complaints about that one. Why is Kasich uh, and Bush and why, you know, th these guys, they can't win. Why are they still on the stage with you guys? I don't know. I don't understand Bush because he, he's just, a stone cold a guy that that is just not going to make it. He's got no persona. Kasich has done a good job in Ohio. He got a little lucky with the oil. You know, they started fracking, but I give him credit because, frankly, in New York we should have started fracking. We'd end up with no debt right now, but they fracked, and uh, Ohio is doing fine. But uh, I, I think Bush should not be on the stage. I agree with you. He spent one hundred and twenty million dollars. Well, I think it's his mother pushing him, Barbara. She came out of the shadows last week, and she she attacked you. But if it wasn't for Mama Bush pushing him, I think he would have dropped out. He looks like he doesn't have the heart for it anymore. Rubio. I mean, Rubio is a lightweight. Well, you know that. He never belonged. He's not in the big boys club. Where'd they get this guy from? I don't know, but he. Uh, I was standing next to him during the debate, and it was sort of a weird thing going on. And uh, I watched, and I said, well, wait a minute. He said that a minute ago, and then he said it again and again. I don't know what happened to him. And He's been very nice to me. I just don't know what happened to him. Donald, in a nutshell, when you are president, and I do hope you win the primary, because I think in a general election you have the greatest chance to beat Hillary if she's the nominee, even though that, although that's not a, a guarantee anymore. Her own party's pulling away from her. What's going to happen if they force her to drop out? Sanders doesn't have a ghost of a chance to win. Do you think they'll pull up someone like uh, uh, Biden? I think they might, although I think it's hard, because Sanders is doing pretty well against her. And I think it's going to be very hard politically for them to bring somebody up who's 
frankly, not done very well in the primary contest. You know, Biden has done very, very poorly over the years in primaries. He's run a number of times, and he's done very, very poorly. So I think it's going to be very hard to do that. I think it's going to be hard to take it away from Sanders if for some reason she doesn't run. Now, with that being said, she shouldn't run. She shouldn't be allowed to run, but I think the Democrats are protecting her. Well, as I say, I don't think she should be allowed to run because of so many scandals surrounding her. And frankly, she's not that appealing a candidate, even to the to the Democrats. So I don't think you have a big problem with her. Strangely enough, the old man, who I think that they went into the mausoleum in Moscow and used some kind of cloning to get Lenin back to life. Because what he's proposing is exactly what Vladimir Lenin would be pr proposing if he were alive today. I never heard anything like this. Well, when you pay twenty, when you pay ninety-five percent in tax, you'll understand it a little bit better. But I don't know; it's just hard. The whole thing is: could, did you ever think you'd be running against a socialist slash perhaps communist? And this is what we've come to. I mean, it's incredible. But he seems to be beating her. I see in a nationwide poll now, Michael, he's even with her all of a sudden. So I don't know. I know. What does that tell us about the, 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 the general mentality of the electorate in the United States of America, Donald? That's the real problem. Well, the, only, the only suggestion I would make is every time you get hard, you go up. Every time you repeat your primary themes, you go up. Donald, please don't go soft because the advisors are telling you to go soft. They're 100% wrong. Going soft is wrong. The people need a strong alpha male leader, and I think you're the only one to win here. And I want to thank you for being with us on the Savage Nation. Good, and I'm glad you told me that. That was very nice. I, I, <laughs> I'm very glad you told me that. Thank you very much, Michael. You take care of yourself. I appreciate everything. Stay strong. Donald Trump back in a minute. Join 